Today's is the second. Um, today we're going to be doing the second of a series of different topics. Uh, just an outline of what we're going to be covering today is going to be discussing the location of Solomon's Temple, which is not exactly just Solomon's Temple. We're going to be getting into that when we discuss in the outline on the significance. Um, we're going to just give a little bit of the background, the construction, and then we're going to jump straight into the conspiracy. And that's going to be like the bulk of uh, the book of today's presentation. And with that, we are ready to roll. Okay, so first to speak about the significance, why this is uh, very important to know what um, this um, piece, uh, this the, the geographic location, why, you know, it's, uh, it's not just for academic exercise, but there is uh, much significance in it. First, we have um, the binding of Isaac. We have, this is um, in the book of Genesis. So the verse tells us, uh, Hashem told Abraham to take your, your son, your favorite son, that you love, that's Yitzchak, that of Yitzchak, and you should go to the land of Moriah which just remember this term, I, I underlined and bolded, the land of Moriah. We're going to come back to that on the next slide. But that is referencing to uh, this location. Also, we have in the Book of Kings, it says, uh, that, that our eyes, uh, may your eyes be open uh, day and night towards this house. And this is um, not only in the context over there, but this is uh, this has been carried out throughout the generations that we have always turned our eyes towards the temple. We pray, we pray heavenwards, but the teaching in the Talmud is that it goes, we face the temple, and then from there, all the prayers go up. So the direction of our prayer, which as Jewish people, we do at least three times a day, is always towards this location. It's our focal point. And likewise, think, uh, likewise um, looking forward, we have the building of the third temple. This is from the book of Isaiah. Will be at the end of days. will be the the mount of Hashem. and all will gather all the nations. and everyone will come and walk in God's path. So this is a very focal point as far as behind us, as far as currently, and as far as um, looking forward. Just a little bit of um, regarding the construction of the temple. So the verse in, uh, this is in Chronicles, uh, that uh, Shlo uh, Solomon began the construction of the house of Hashem, Yerushalayim, in Yerushalayim, Bahar Hamaria, on the mountain of Moriah. So that's what I said to remember when we spoke about the binding of Isaac. We said that it was, and he was supposed to go, if we could just uh, scroll back, it says, go to the land of Moriah. So that is where the where the temple was constructed, Bahar Hamiria on the Mount of Moriah, Mount Moriah. And not only was the temple, the first temple there, but we also have likewise the second temple, and we see that illustrated in both the verses and the verses in Ezra and Haggai. So the first verse we had, the Achinam is Beacham and it set the altar upon its bases, which we understand that that's the basis where it, the, the foundation of the the place where the temple stood, the, the first temple. So that's where the second temple was put on. And likewise, in the next verse, we have over here, God great is the glory of this house, the, the, this later house, Minarishang, the, the latter one is greater than the first one, Amar Hashem Tzavakis, Hashem of Hoseas, Umakim Azen, in this place, at the Inshallah, I will give peace, Numa Hashem Tzavakis. So in, it's in this place, this is the same place that this is the same place uh, that where the temple was. We have a, a graphic over here. This is uh, the Ostrakon, if I could pronounce that properly. That is a uh, that's something that was an archaeological find that it mentions. It refers to, from what I understand, the first temple. Um, this is outside of what we have already spoken about in the Torah, in the in what's called the Bible. Now jumping into the conspiracy. So the conspiracy is, and if you go online, you um, there's no shortage of these videos. Um, and they, I guess they get a lot of attention because it looks shocking and interesting. But the idea would be is that basically the temple, as they have in this picture, uh, this was actually apparently 
put together by Ernest Martin. Um, I don't know exactly how far this conspiracy goes back, but it goes back at least to the late, um, right before 2000s, maybe it predates. But here would be the uh, graphic of the conspiracy, basically putting the temple instead of where we generally have it on uh, what we call the Temple Mount, it would be shifted over to the temple to the side to the to the the, the mountain beside it, which is um, in Ir David. And they claim that what is the temple now? It's sorry, what's the, what we refer to as the temple was really just a fortress of Antonio, a Roman fortress. And as you see, where they're pointing to the Wailing Wall, they say that we're just praying by the fort and we're not praying by anything of much religi religious significance. So there is um, a number of a number of points that they use to build up such a claim. Um, part of them involve uh, quotes from Josephus and the like. We are not going to be going into that. It's not my field, but uh, there is a plenty of quotes that is based on the biblical text and likewise Jewish tradition. So that is what we are going to be focusing on and dealing with. So the first one is that of. Uh, the term Zion. They say that the Zion in the Torah is referring to is referring to the city of David, and we have verse references that the temple is built on Zion. So if the temple is built on Zion, and Zion is referring to the city of David, so that means that the temple is in the city of David. Um, number two is the temple was was built upon living water sources. Again, there's uh, verses which we'll take a look at shortly that um, they use to indicate that. That the temple is built upon a uh, living, living water, a spring, and the spring would be the only spring that we have in this region is the Gichon Spring, which would be in the city of David. And likewise, they try to they try to bring support from classic Jewish medieval uh, Torah sages. So that's what we're going to jump into. So starting with their quote unquote proof number one. So they claim that it was uh, that. Uh, Temple was in Zion. So you, they, you have a verse of Var Hashem al Kol Machin Hartzion that he created on top of Hartzion. Uh, this is referring in the context is referring that the, Hashem's build, the, the building of the Beis Amigdash is on Zion. And likewise, we have in the next verse, Hine Anuchi by Yabodim, behold, me and the children, Hashem Nasan, Li Hashem, the Hashem gave, Laisis and Lois and Bisol as a sign for the Jewish people. Mim Hashem Tzavakri is from Hashem, Hashem Baharzien, he who dwells in the mountains of Zion. So we see very much that Hashem's dwelling, God's dwelling, is in the, is in Zion. And then they then you have an, the other verses to link the two by Yilke David as in Sudasien, that David took hold of, of the of the stronghold of Zion, he ear David, which that is the city of David. And likewise, we have another verse also in Isaiah a little later on. That uh, David, he dwelt in the stronghold and therefore is called the city of David. So we see both things. We see the verses showing us that Hashem's resting place, referring to his temple, is in Zion. And we see that Zion is synonymous with that of the city of David. So this is a graphic that they would make. What They want to make it very clear that we have the wrong place. And if you look at the verses, uh, apparently it should be showing that actually uh, this, the, what they highlighted in green, that's where the temple really is supposed to stand. So it sounds pretty convincing. However, Zion isn't exclusively the city of David. Um, so I brought, there's many texts, we could spend the whole class on this, but just to keep it, just to keep it brief and to the point, and maybe depending on uh, feedback we get in the comments, feedback we get from other people, we very good chance we'll have to do a follow-up on this. But at least for now, um, let's start with these two verses. We have the first one in Kings. As Yaakov Shlema Zikni Yisrael, Shlema gathered the elders of the of the Jewish people. Then the verse continues. Alamelech Shlema Yushlaim to King Shlomo in Jerusalem. Lahali says, Orgin Bris Hashem to bring up the ark of the Lord. Meir David Hutzion from the city of David. Uh, that of Zion. So we see that what's happening over here is they're bringing up the ark from the city of David. Why would they have to bring it up if that's where the temple was? And likewise, we have a verse in Psalms, Shem Ismail uh, a song of Psalms of the sons of Korach, 
Godal Hashem Muhulam Aid, great is Hashem and his praise is much Bialy Kenu in the city of our God, Harkoche, his holy mountain, his holy mountain, Yafid Naif Misais Kalaryat. Beautiful for the situation, the joy of the whole earth, Hartzioin, Yaksei Sofain, Mount Zion on the north, Kiers Melochro, the city of the great king. So basically, what these verses are showing, first of all, this verse shows that they're bringing it up. They bring up the ark from the city of David. And even more, we have actually a, we have actually a, a pointer as to where 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 things where things were, and that is to the north of the city of David. So this actually indicates that it was expanded. So it's true that that at the beginning it was it, it, it may have started off that this was this was uh, Tsiain, but Tsiain expanded into the north. And if you look at this uh, at this um, this little graphic, sorry, I couldn't find a better one. We have the north on the on, on the top on the top picture. Uh, that so the picture is a picture um, artist illustration of the city of David, and then to the north would be where it was expanded, where the ark was brought up, and where and where the temple and where the temple was uh, constructed. Uh, likewise, you have the picture below. Um, it's hard to kind of visualize on top of each other. Maybe someone watching this presentation could help out with the graphic, but uh, there you see in the top center the the Temple Mount. So that's as far as the first. That's as far as the first claim, saying that it is um, that Zion. That Zion means uh, just the city of David, and it can't include the mountain that we know as Harabites. Going on to proof number two. So they, the, the the second claim is why we have the wrong location is because they say that it was on top of a, a natural water. And there is many verses. I just brought these for illustrations. So we have from Ezekiel, Yeshivena Pesach Abayis. Ezekiel says that it's brought to the, to the opening of the house. And behold, water was issuing out from under the threshold. Uh, that's uh, in reference to the temple. And likewise, we have in uh, Zechariel, on that day, that living water, a live spring, will come out from Jerusalem. And likewise, we have in Psalms, a Psalm of Korach, a Psalm of Korach, a song, founded on the holy mountain. God loves the, the, the gates of Zion, more than all those dwellings of Yaakov. And all my springs are in thee, are in, in, in them. So you see that there's a direct connection between the base Hamikdash and being on top of, of springs, or so would be the claim. And, I, and just to reiterate that if um, the only the springs that we have, that you see in the picture, the Gichin springs, so that is in the city of David and not in what we know today as the Harhabites. So the response would be very simple. Um, first was the vision of Ezekiel. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, I guess you could call that a fast one, but um, no, it doesn't add up because uh, that is a vision of Ezekiel. It's been Marius, Elikim, as Ezekiel says earlier, this was the vision of God. This is talking about the third temple. And uh, I think offhand, Rashi already points out that this was an ace. There's a change in topography. Lots of things happen when the when when Mashiach comes, and this is no way any support for such a claim. And likewise, uh, some of the other things they quote, um, I didn't include it on. I didn't include it in the presentation. Something that sticks out that I also saw them call Hashem Alamayim. Hashem is over the waters. It says in Psalms. So again, that is just allegorical. And just for the sake of it, a very a very famous psalm to to illustrate how psalms is allegorical, and you have lots of statements in in the Tanakh that are allegor allegorical. I quoted this famous, the most one of the most famous psalms. Over there, it's saying, even when our, uh, David is saying, he's saying, even when I go in the valley of death, in the psalmovis, the shadow of death, like I will not fear. Because you got her with me. And certainly the gates of Movis, I hope there's no one um, going to start trying to figure out where this uh, valley is. 
because it's an it's obviously allegorical and it's not meant to be not meant to be a geographic location. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. They continue at it. And uh, proof number three, which they try to try to bring support that we got the wrong location, is the classic Jewish medieval commentators. They say they acknowledge it. And you bring, they bring, you have in the verse in Isaiah, it says, our holy temple, our pride, which our ancestors praised you. The Shefa's age has been consumed by fire. And all that was dear to us is in, is in room, is ruined. So on this verse, the one of the most classic commentators, the Radak, David Kimpri, so he writes, it's still in its state of desolation. It was never built. The place of the base of Mikdash, we are going in the hand of non Jews. And if you look on the left, we got where we identified the classic, understand the classic location of, of the temple is where the Dome of the Rock is sitting. So, but if you look at the, so apparently the Yadak is saying that it was never built, even by the hands of non-Jews. Yet on the on the left we have, on the left we have the the Dome of the Rock, and that was already built by the seventh century. So that was in the time of the Yadak, and yet he's he's saying that it has not been, it has it has it has not been. Sorry, one moment. Yeah, and the Radak is still saying that it has not been built up. Uh, they also bring down from Maimonides, they bring down from many, these are just illustrations of classic people to illustrate the point. Um, Maimonides is one of them. Maimonides says, and also again, the date saying after the construction, he lived after the construction of the Dome of the Rock. And he says, even though the, 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 the temple is destroyed, but when he's saying because of our transgressions, a person is still is still obligated in its in its in 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 in, in its um in fearing it. Just as when it was built, just like the guarding of of the Shabbos day is is for forever. After Mikdash so too the commandment of fearing the Beis Hamikdash is is forever. Even though it's destroyed, it still retains its holiness. So apparently they claim. That again, here we have Maimonides living much, much after the Dome of the Rock was constructed, and yet he's saying that it's in a state of destruction. And additionally, this actually I didn't see from them, but I'm going to give it to them. You know, why not? I'll, 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 iron, I'll iron man their claim. And that is from the Barbano, much later, and again on the same verse. He says, even though the non-Jews have come into this, to this, um, to this inheritance, time the, the those from the, the Christians, at the time the Arabs, Hashem hasn't given over, he hasn't given them the the, the thought to build a, a, a house in the place of the first base of Nikdash. So Again, we see three most um, uh, esteemed, I wouldn't say most, but three esteemed uh, commentators that are all saying seemingly that it is in a state of des desolation, even though it was after the Dome of the Rock was constructed. So the response to this is, uh, we'll start off with the Radak. Um, you just need to look again, context. Context makes a big deal. Just take a look in the Radak. You go back to verse 9, and you see what the Radak says over there. The Radak says in verse 9, I'm just going to scroll up for a moment. This was in verse 10, the quote that they're taking from the Radak. You just have to scroll back one verse, and the Radak already says, Even though the non-Jews came after and built it up, since it's not, since the, the Jewish people aren't active over there, it's still considered in a state of desolation. So he explains himself. He explains himself. What does he mean in a state of desolation? He means that it's not, it's not the, it's not the temple that, that stood. Not talking about the shape of the temple. It's not talking, it's, it's not a place of Jewish worship. So therefore, the place where Jewish worship is still in a state of desolation. 
And likewise, that's the same thing for the Barbon of the Rambam. It's something I don't feel I need to give too much time on because it's something which is very evident. I didn't, I actually, when I read this, I had to like pause for a second when they quote, when the Rambam was quoted, I learned my monodies many times. I went through this and I never actually thought that it would be taken in such a context. It just, it just totally out of, uh, out of, out of, out of character. So that is as far as uh, these medieval rabbinic um, sources. Uh, here's a little bit of a um, of a timeline. Um, I think what the 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 the, the trying to yeah, got to put a you got to pin it somewhere in the timeline when it was that the, the Jewish people forgot. If they did forget, you got to figure out you got to figure out some time some place in the timeline that that it goes. Uh, from what I understand, although I couldn't get this uh, square on, I think, and again, in the comments, I'm sure we're going to get uh, a lot of people uh, coming to teach me and enlighten me on what I missed and what I don't know. But um, I think it's around over here after uh, after the first crusaders, when they came in and they and they uh, took over Jerusalem. So we have Rabbi Avram Chia. He mentions how there was no Jews, not even one Jew found in Jerusalem. So there was this period that Jews were not uh, didn't have access to Jerusalem. That's so from 1099 is when the Crusaders came in, and then we have already 20. Uh, we have um, 1120, uh, 20 years later, uh, or something like that, or 20 whatever years later, we have already um, indicate uh, like testimony that there was not no Jews there, and in already in 1170, then uh, the Jews uh, pop up again. So there was this a small period, a window of time that Jews were not in, in the city. So again, this is a little bit of an open topic. I'm probably going to have to make a follow-up. Um, so just putting that on the table and we'll leave it at that. Another thing I wanted to mention uh, regarding this conspiracy, why it, um, why it, it um, aside from the fact that all the quote-unquote proofs uh, I think are nothing more than just fluff. Uh, there's something else, and that is as far as we have two commandments, um, two I know offhand, but in the in the chat we'll do a follow up if I'm missing if I'm missing over here um, that the we are warned from entering into the into, into the temple, and like we quoted in the Ramam earlier that uh, even though it's just even though it's it's not built up, we still have the we still have what's called Mary Mikdash. We still have to be show fear and reverence to that place. Um, so we have the verse in Numbers, Tzavis Ben Yisrael, command the Jewish people, the, 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 the Jews, the, not the Jews, the children of Israel, if we're going to use that historic terminology, and send from the camp, anyone who got the Tziras affliction or anyone who became uh, who became uh, impure as a Zav, and anyone who is defiled by the dead, which just to pause for a moment, that is basically everyone nowadays, ever since we don't have the red heifer, we are effectively um, what's called Tommy Lynette, where Tommy Mace, which is Tommy Lenefesh, we are considered, we have this type of impurity because we have no way of getting out. And we, people meet dead people, you know, that's just part of life, people die, and there's no way of, there's no exit for that. Um, unlike when there was in the time of the temple that they had a process. Now we don't have that process. So that effectively it applies to everyone. And the Torah is telling us that these people, which is us, everyone, has to be careful from going into this place. And likewise, we have, and likewise, we have another verse, and you need to fear my mikdash. And Hashem so says Hashem. So the idea of uh, fearing the the this this place is something which is effective uh, effective today. And I ran out of time, so I wasn't able to quote it. But there's um, the Rambam codifies bringing ready from the Talmud that this what what does it mean to fear? You're not allowed to well certain areas we're not allowed to enter. Period. And then there's other areas which just require fear. You're not allowed to go with your shoes. You're not allowed to go with your stick and uh, your 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 wallet, etc. Um, so this is something which was uh, this is something which was effective. This is in effect to every Jew, um, and it requires a little bit of understanding of the halachic process. But if there ever is a doubt, if the Jews ever had a doubt which which uh, mountain it would be, they would automatically be obligated 
to be cautious about both mountains or whatever mountains. Every every mountain in Jerusalem, they'd have to they'd have to then be cautious if, they, if they're not sure. Just like when we have when it comes to birds, we don't know which are the with the translations for the birds in the Torah, which ones are the ones which are not kosher. So therefore, we don't need any birds, with the exception of those that we could definitively definitively say that those are kosher. This again, this requires uh, some understanding of the local process, but that is the point that if we don't know, we don't do. Unless it's something which is rabbinic, that's only up. Unless something which is biblical, if we don't know, we don't do. And yet, um, we don't see any. I I haven't seen, and I and it, they haven't brought forward. There is no such thing of Jews being wary of any other mountain in Jerusalem. So it's not only something which is which is uh, just a conspiracy, and something which we are so sure about. Not now. I'm talking about all the way back of all generations of the, when Jews were living in Jerusalem. That they didn't, uh, they weren't concerned about this. Uh, to bring uh, from the word of the Advaz, uh, he he brings down Kadover Baru. It's on, it's certain Shatachas Akipa that what's under the the dome, Sham Evan Ashsia. That's where the foundation stone is. Misafik without any worry or concern. Nikra Etzlam Alachsra. Maybe an Arabic uh, speaker could help me out on that last word. So that is something which um, is something which we're confident in. Um, it's not something which we are doubtful in. Um, just to illustrate as far as uh, where we could go, there's also uh, there's also an additional, there's there's different tiers as far as how far you could go, depending on your status. There's also as far as, um, so there's where Kohanim, priests could go, where the Levium could go, where the Israelim could go, and Lahav, though there's, as far as non-Jews, if non-Jews wanted to bring uh, sacrifices to the temple, which was which was done. It something they, they there's also a limit to how far they could go. And here is an archaeological finding a stone um, which they found written in Greek to the um, all the Greek tourists that would come. And it basically says no temple, no strangers to enter within this area. And whoever is caught will be by himself responsible for an ensuing death. So this is something which isn't which isn't just a nice thing that we are careful of, but Properly revering the place carries a death penalty. It's something which is of utmost importance. And again, we haven't been, we don't see any form of hesitation um, on the contrary. And maybe this is something that I missed out from the, from the, from the slides. We have, we have how the Rambam, Maimonides, um, how he, he speaks, how he went uh, to the area to pray. And likewise, we have the others throughout the generations. Uh, this is something a little bit of a bonus. I did. I, I don't. I don't know exactly if it's tied into the conspiracy. Um, again, this is something to leave in 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 the in the, in the comments. People could uh, comment on it. But there is uh, the story is brought down from uh, um, in, by the Sol Solomon the Magnificent. Magnificent. Uh, he was a sultan in Jerusalem, um, or he had a palace in Jerusalem, and the story is in. Around the 18, uh, 1539, 1540, somewhere in that era. We're not going to read the whole thing, but basically, uh, there is, uh, he saw a Christian woman bringing, uh, dumping garbage. He, he asked what, what she was doing. And he, and she said that she had a tradition to, uh, that that's what they would do. They'd bring their garbage and they would dump it in a certain location. So what he did is he hid some coins and he told people there's a big treasure underneath and people started digging. And the story has it that when they finished digging, that's how we got the wall. So this is something which is more connected to the Western Wall than the Temple Mount. Um, I don't know if the two are necessary, are connected. I think it's a separate story. Again, I'll leave that for all the people in the in, in, in the comments to put that in. I think this is something which is uh, specifically about the Temple Mount, which is a very amazing story because this is this is where we go. This is where we go to pray, um, and that it was one time covered in garbage until. Solomon, Solomon the, Magnus, the Magnificent, excuse me, he um, had this ploy to clean up the mess and to uh, expose it. Uh, leaving aside that actually in before 1948, it uh, didn't go as deep. Uh, the people where the people are standing here, it was a little bit higher until, um, until it was excavated downwards to kind of clear up the rubble to reveal even more of the wall. And just to wrap up, on, uh, looking forward, we have the uh, prophecy in Isaiah, in God's promise, which we are awaiting. That the even 
Um, even then, I'll bring them to my holy mountains and make them joy, joyful in my house of prayer. I lay seham v'zebcheham, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices, l'ratzin, shall be accepted on mizbechi on my altar, ki beisi, beis the filo, because my house will be a house of prayer, yikar l'chalamim, a house for all the people, all the nations to pray. And I want to thank uh, everyone for watching. I'm sure that this is only the beginning of a long, long conversation. But hopefully I cleared up some of these myths and hopefully some of that's behind us.